Yo, 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 what is up, my fallopian tubers? Cesario from the Wario coming back at you with another video for your butt. And today's gonna be a Bob Lewis response. He wants to know where you headed with your collection, Essen. So mine's is easy. I'm a binder guy now. Um, basically saying now, before I was just a set guy, but now I'm into putting all my sets into binders. And the main goal is to collect every top set from 74 till present and just keep going so all these top sets that you see right here I put together mainly through packs and then some of the older ones like the 70s I've been buying starter sets and then filling them in but only buying from people trading with people no COMC no eBay none of that none of that four rounded corners or any of that stuff so let me let you know exactly how it's done so, so this is my 1958 Tops binder, and when I have, I bought this as a starter set, check it out, and I'm down to two cards. Okay, number 145 doesn't exist. There's a story behind that. And then I need Brooks Robinson, and I need the Braves Fence Busters. Okay, and just a quick thing: Do you can you guess how many dicks there are in the 1958 set? Let's count them: one dick, two dicks, three dicks. Four dicks, five dicks. There's three dicks on one page. What are the odds? Dick number six, lucky number seven dick, coming in at number eight. Hide your dick, y'all. Dick number nine, coming in at number ten. Little dick, the eleventh dick, and the twelfth dick, who must have been spelunkin. So a quick story and basically how I started with the starter sets. You see this Mickey Mantle, um, this is my second copy I bought of this Mickey Mantle. The first Mickey Mantle I bought like this was encased, it was graded, and, um, man, it cost me quite a few hundred dollars. And it was my first Mickey Mantle ever, man, I got it on layaway. I remember it took me, like, quite a while to take it out. So I took it out on layaway, and I swore I would get, that was my first Mickey Mantle card. I swore I was going to keep that one forever, it was special. But then, um, one of my friends on Instagram asked me, if I would sell it to him and we ended up trading even though I said I would never do that because him and his dad were putting together the set and they needed the Mickey Mantle to you know so he had a great story and so you know the trade went through and at first I was like pretty bad <laughs> sad about it you know what I mean but then um weeks later he offered to sell me all his doubles that him and his dad acquired from the 58 set so I bought all his doubles for a dollar each. So I memorized it was like 230 bucks. So I bought like 230 cards for a dollar each. And from there, I started buying all the stars and, you know, all the cards in between. And this is where I'm at now, man. So I'm getting close to it. Now, let me show you another one. I'm also trying to put together the giant set from Tops, the 64 Top Giant. And here's my checklist I need. Okay, so here's my 74 set, all right? So this was a starter set too. So look at the list I had when I first got it, and it was a starter set. I mean, I needed hundreds of them still. And then, um, after Passion for Cards hooked me up, I needed this list. And then Mark Addison hooked me up, and so then I crossed them out. So normally what I do is when it's a big list I, like this, I, put, I just only write down the numbers, you know? And then it gets like this, and I do the numbers. But once I'm at to where I'm at now, where it's like 20 cards, then I'm going to start writing down the names. Like right here, we got my 1976 tops. And when I get down to just a few players, then I write down the names. So this is my checklist for the 1976 set. So that's my focus with the sets. Is buying all these sets and putting them together without, using, uh, without buying it from an online store basically. And then so I do most of them through packs. So... All my extras that I have, all my doubles, I put them on here in case anybody needs to trade anybody, you know, anybody needs some of the cards. Because uh, part of his focus was also what you plan to do in the future. And I'll get into that after the second part. So I do have a small PC of side players, which I did have. Look at, look at this old binder, how old it is. Ew, look at the blood stains. <clears throat> but this is my old binder I had as a kid. Okay, and, re and so... I did, did have a small, you know, habit of collecting a few players. And the reason I'm going to show this real quick is because I wanted to 
I saw Jets Boy video and he showed some of his bootleg, I guess is what he would call them, but I never really called him bootleg. I was looking for a name to call him, but he calls him bootleg. And I'll show you one of my favorite ones about what we're talking about, about how card shows. You know, I guess now they'd probably just be called custom cards. But back then, we just called them like fake baseball cards or like, what the hell is this? You know, and I'm talking about cards like this. They're not from a brand. And then like the back, it's just like, just weird. Um, but one of my favorite ones, the first one that I bought, so then I started buying more after that, but the first one that I, I kind of really dug was this Don Maddenly card like that, um, which is coming up pretty soon, <laughs> I hope, okay, yeah, it should be, you know, like cards like this, but you look at the back, that's all they say, but ah, where is it? There was one that I bought, and then I, that I swore I would never buy those. But then once I bought one, a Don Mattingly that I had to have, because I just thought it was the coolest looking shit. You know, I was like, you know, there wasn't Photoshop back then, but it was a great Photoshop job. Holy smokes, where is it? Hold on, let me pause it and find it. Okay, I passed it a few times, but this is the one I'm talking about. I just thought this, you know, I had never really seen one like that with, you know, the stadium in the background and stuff. I just thought it looked crazy awesome fell in love with this so i bought it. and then after that i started buying the other so-called um, bootleg cards so this is how i started a small pc of other players you know so that's something i did and like you know a lot of people have been oh, let me see sharing their stories like say this card right here i believe is some of the, the cards that we used to have to cut out you know from the bottom of the boxes so you would have to get the box like this You know, you would buy the whole box, and then there's cards on the bottom that you would cut out. So they don't do that anymore, but, you know, and then, so they're like, I guess you would call them nowadays, it'd be called like short prints or insert sets and stuff, but they don't do that anymore. But So those are the oddball cards that, you know, you could collect back then, you know, and the throwbacks, cards like this, like from the 59, those usually came in magazines, you know, and the, you know, the baseball card price thing. And, you know, and you try to collect the whole set. So those are pretty cool. So I try to do this in modern times. And let me show you my failed attempt at it. And another type of card real quick that I have to get to. I used to love these. I used to take this card right here. I used to take it to school, man. And pop it in my, um, on my desk. And my, you know, uh, I thought these were cool as shit. I think if people probably bought these cards nowadays, they probably wouldn't, um, they probably want it slabbed and wouldn't actually use them. They'd probably never pop it out of its, um, little, little tabs. But I thought these were cool, man. I used to take this to school with me and put it on my desk. <laughs> Ciao! <clears throat> so when I got back into collecting, you know, um, I started seeing Stanton. So you see all these Stantons. Those three players that I started seeing and getting all their cards. You know, so these are like the original, all the original stands I started buying at first, you know. But then, you know, I started running into like the thickies. Look at that one. That's a nice one right there. Focus. But, you know, then I started running into like the thicky cards and the meanies and relics and stuff that just... So then here's my Bryce Harpers. I, I like, I kind of dig like the cards when they're in their um, minor league still. Um, so, you know, and then die cuts like this. And they just didn't look right. You know, the meanies. So then I did go buy some pages and everything. But then the slabs started coming in. And I was like, how do you do the slabs? So these are my Renatos. You know, his Heritage Minor League cards. Got a bunch of cards from the nuts. So, yeah, so then I started, I kind of gave up. So these are all my Renatos. I just kind of gave up on collecting um, in binders because there was just too many cards that wouldn't fit right or look right or damage them if you put a bunch of slabs and they would damage these cards. So basically now, I just keep all my cards in um boxes because 
you can fit all your all types of cards in there like in my mic hold on and so now basically this is how i keep my um my pc cards like you see this this is mike trout minor league card man it's it's awful because i have to use the light on because it's it's like two o'clock in the morning here in cali right now but these are like mike trout uh minor league cards man i wonder if i could turn off the light that'll work yeah that works better looks like so like i got this mike trout rookie which i just put into the bulletproof um top loader for a video and like these two um rookie cards i had them raw and just just in the box raw man and i knew i would get some bad reviews and comments if i didn't put them in um some protection so i just put them in some protection but this is how i just keep all my um these cards now so this is my harper box my trout box you know i have an arenado and brian the mickey mano so that's the second focus of my collection is you know stars and stuff so that's it bob lewis i know this video was went kind of long and it was probably out of focus and stuff but yeah that's what i do mainly a set collector and i collect some stars on the side that's my main thing and so right now since it's like three in the morning i don't know why i'm up i'm gonna open up some some packs all right guys so love the hobby keep collecting baseball cards forever st ciao <laughs> my mama talking to me trying to tell me how to live dun, 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 dun.